Hi and welcome back to Free Science Lessons. By the end of this video you should be able to describe what's meant by autosomal linkage. You should then be able to describe the effects of autosomal linkage on phenotype ratio. And finally, you should be able to calculate recombination frequency and use this to determine the degree of linkage. Now I need to warn you that this can seem like quite a tricky topic. You may need to pause the video and rewatch sections to get the key ideas. Now in the last video we looked at dihybrid inheritance and I need to recap some of this before I start looking at autosomal linkage. We looked at the inheritance of seed shape and seed colour in pea plants. The gene for seed shape has two alleles. The allele for round seeds is dominant and the allele for wrinkle seeds is recessive. The gene for seed colour also has two alleles. The allele for yellow seeds is dominant and the allele for green seeds is recessive. Now the genes for seed shape and seed colour are on different pairs of homologous chromosomes and as we saw this means that these two genes are unlinked. I'm showing you here the genes for seed shape and seed colour in a pea plant. This plant is heterozygous for both genes and has the phenotype round yellow seeds. So what happens if we cross two parents which are both heterozygous for two unlinked genes? Well the key idea you need to remember is that for unlinked genes either allele in a pair can combine randomly with either allele in another pair. This is called Mendel's law of independent assortment and this means that we can have four different combinations of these alleles in the gametes and I'm showing you those here. So here's the cross for two pea plants which are both heterozygous for seed shape and seed colour. We now have four different phenotypes in the offspring. Nine have the phenotype round yellow seeds, three have round green seeds, three have wrinkled yellow seeds and one has wrinkled green seeds. Now this ratio of nine to three to three to one is found when we cross two individuals who are heterozygous for two different genes, as long as those two genes are unlinked. Okay, so in this video we're looking at autosomal linkage. Now the word autosomal means we're looking at chromosomes which are not the sex chromosomes. So for example in humans, the autosomes are chromosome pairs 1 to 22. Now the example that we're going to look at is in the fruit fly Drosophila. Drosophila only has four pairs of chromosomes. Chromosome pair 1 are the sex chromosomes. Chromosome pairs 2, 3 and 4 are the autosomes. Now on chromosome pair 2 we find two linked genes. One gene determines body colour. The dominant allele, capital G, produces a grey body and the recessive allele, lowercase g, produces a black body. The other gene determines wing length. The dominant allele, capital L, produces long wings and the recessive allele, lowercase l, produces very short non-functional wings and scientists call these vestigial wings. Ok, I'm showing you here two fruit flies that we're going to cross. The fly on the left is a female with a grey body and long wings. This fly is homozygous dominant for the genes for body colour and wing length and I'm showing you the alleles on the chromosome pair. The fly on the right is a male with a black body and vestigial wings. Now this fly is homozygous recessive for the genes for body colour and wing length and again I'm showing the alleles on the chromosome pair. Ok, here are the gametes from these flies. The gametes from the female fly all have the dominant alleles for body colour and wing length and the gametes from the male fly all have the recessive alleles for body colour and wing length. Ok, I'm showing you here the offspring from that cross. As you can see, all of the offspring have grey body colour and long wings and all of the offspring are heterozygous for the genes for body colour and wing length. Ok, so what happens if we now cross two of these offspring together? Here are the parents and here are the gametes produced by each parent. Ok, here's the Punnett square showing the cross. Three out of four offspring have grey body and long wings 
and one out of four offspring have black body and vestigial wings. Now you'll notice that I'm using brackets in the genotypes. Brackets show that these genes are linked. You don't have to use brackets if you don't want to. However, I think they're a useful reminder that the genes are linked. So crossing two individuals which are heterozygous for two linked genes gives us a ratio of 3 to 1 in the phenotypes of the offspring. Now compare that with the cross for two unlinked genes that we saw at the beginning of this video. Unlinked genes give us a phenotype ratio of 9 to 3 to 3 to 1 in the offspring. So as you can see, if two genes are linked, then we get a completely different ratio of phenotypes in the offspring compared with two genes that are unlinked. And that's because linked genes are inherited together. In other words, linked genes do not obey Mendel's law of independent assortment. OK, now in reality, the situation is a bit more complicated than I've shown here. Sometimes when we carry out this cross, we also produce a small number of flies with different phenotypes from the parents. And we can see this here. As well as the offspring we saw before, we also have flies with grey body and vestigial wings. And we have flies with black body and long wings. These flies are called recombinants. Looking at the genotypes of the recombinant flies, we can see that the parental alleles have been shuffled. Now this shuffling is due to crossing over, which takes place during meiosis. In crossing over, genes are exchanged between homologous chromosomes, and this can create new combinations of alleles. Now crossing over takes place more frequently if the two genes are further apart on the chromosome. Genes that are very close together may be affected by crossing over much less frequently. Now I should just point out one fact. In Drosophila, crossing over only takes place in females. However, in most organisms, crossing over takes place in both males and females. OK, so the presence of recombinants in the offspring can show that crossing over has taken place. Now, the recombination frequency can be used to determine the amount of crossing over, and we calculate recombination frequency using this equation. The recombination frequency is the number of recombinant offspring divided by the total number of offspring and then multiplied by 100 to get a percentage. Now the maximum recombination frequency we can get is 50%. A value of 50% tells us that the two genes are not linked. That means that the two genes are on different pairs of homologous chromosomes, and Mendel's law of independent assortment will be obeyed. However, if the recombination frequency is less than 50%, then the two genes are linked. In other words, the genes are on the same pair of homologous chromosomes. Recombinants can still be formed by crossing over. The further apart the genes are on the chromosome, the more likely crossing over will be. And this will lead to a relatively large value for recombination frequency. However, if the genes are close together on the chromosome, then crossing over becomes less likely, and in this case, we will get a low value for recombination frequency. In the next video, we look at the chi-squared test.